If you've ever had a Mormon girlfriend, you know that where you put your hands is incredibly important. It is no different for playing guitar. So today we're gonna to talk about a good way to think about how you should place your picking or plucking hand, right? In my experience, when you first start out, it's a really unnatural thing to do. Like how do you kind of like get all these down where you can assign fingers to strings and stuff like that. So it's one of those things that you just need to get good technique and practice with. Uh, this is just the way I do it. Now there's a lot of different ways to do it. If you're not doing it this way and it's working for you, great, keep with it. But this is just how I do it. I know I'm not alone in this and it seems to work pretty well for me, right? So guitar is an instrument that really benefits from this kind of system where your thumb is responsible for the low E and A string, and you can kind of jump back and forth, right? Now, the way chord voicings work, especially in standard tuning on a guitar, it's really beneficial to have three fingers be used uh, or be available at one time, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have your thumb kind of rest on the low E string. Now, if you look at my hand right here straight on, you can notice that my thumb is out a bit from my fingers. It's not like a claw like this where the thumb kind of comes inside and the fingers are kind of like floating over it. It's almost kind of like this right here. So think of like a, like a bicycle brake, right? How your kind of thumb is like on the handlebar and you're pumping the brake. Same kind of concept right here. So your thumb is here and you want your thumb to be able to freely go between the E and A string without having to kind of fight the rest of your fingers, right? Now, if you notice, my fingers, my pointer, middle, and ring finger, are gonna be assigned to the D, G, and B string. So if you look at it from the side here, you can see how they're coming in, right? Instead of coming out. Now, in flamenco, you might wanna kinda of do stuff where you're kinda of out, cause you can kinda of build up a lot of speed. Same with like playing bass and stuff like this. But when you really want to assign a string to a finger, it's a good way to kinda of come into your hand, right? So for example, I'm just gonna play, Let's just play a C chord, right? Now, my root note is on the A string, and I can get the rest of the chord, the D, G, and B string with these fingers by coming up and in, right? Now, the reason that I wanna come up and in is because I just bring my fingers in and put them back down, and they automatically form under the strings. If you can see, I'm kinda of getting the string with the pad of my finger. It's not straight on like this, coming in, or off like this. It's coming into my hand, right? Almost kind of like pulling the trigger on something. Now the reason we do this is because you can always just bring your fingers in and come back down and they're right where you left them. So you don't have to hunt and search for the string once you get down there, right? So again, just make a C chord, hit the root note, and then bring the chord into your hand, release it, and you should be in the vicinity of those strings that you started on, okay? Now this might not always be the case, and like I said, it's kind of unnatural, so it may seem kind of almost like a claw and you're fighting your way into it, but eventually you will get comfortable with practice, right? Now, the reason I like this way, instead of maybe doing it more straight on, is because when you hit the strings like this and you come up and off the strings, you have to search for them again, and you might get the wrong one, you know, if you go back forward to it, right? So again, we're coming from the side, thumb, chord. And just by putting your fingers back down, they should reform in about the same area. Now you could move everything down a string, and now your thumb has the root note, and your fingers are getting the highest three strings. Now hey, if you're feeling frisky, get your pinky involved too, and then you can assign each finger the bottom four strings. And in that case, every thing is represented, right? Now, if you do this with your thumb kind of patrolling the E and A string, and your fingers just getting these middle strings, you, you're you probably wondering like, well, how do I get the high E string? Really, your, your hand can just kind of float and jump back and forth because it's the same movement and you're just memorizing where those strings are, right? So, D, G, and B, G, B, and E. A great way to practice it, we're just gonna take the C major chord, right? And we're gonna go A, D, G, B. Then if you want to, you can try an alternating bass note, right? So to do that, we're gonna add the G in the C by bringing your ring finger up to three A and your pinky, or your ring finger on three E and your pinky on three A. And then you can kind of go A, D, G, B, E, D, G, B. Because I'm kind of floating there, I'm sure that when I bring my fingers back into the chord, they're gonna be right where I left them. I don't have to search for the right strings and kind of get everything going, right? They're always gonna be right there. Now, once you get comfortable enough, we can kind of go thumb, index, middle, ring. You can start doing cool things with chords to kind of like embellish them, right? Instead of just playing all, all at once, 
or to play them slowly like an arpeggio, you can kind of do this thing where you peel the chord off, right? Now this, I kind of equate to like pulling a sticker off of something, right? You start with your thumb and then your hand just kind of, your wrist moves and you get kind of every string by itself. It sounds really pretty, you know, if you're going for kind of like a more, I don't know, more gentle sound, I suppose, right? So I think this is really important, especially if you have kind of ambitions to do some cool finger style stuff. And like I said before, chord voicings on a standard tuned guitar really work themselves out where you'll have a root note on the E or the A string, and then the rest of the chord voicing will be on these three strings. Worst case scenario, you can just move them up and down, right? Like, uh, let's take, Let's take a minor seven voicing, right? So if I anchor my middle finger, my middle finger is gonna be the root on this B note, the seventh fret on the E string. I'm gonna skip the A string and I'm just gonna kind of bar the seventh fret on the D, G, and B string. And this is a minor seven voicing, right? This can be moved around pretty easy. A, or so B minor seven to A minor seven. So all that is is three chords, a minor seven, a minor seven, back two frets, and then I'm going to a G major seven, which is here, three E with your pointer finger, skip the A string again, four D, four G, three B. Okay, so because I have this system, I can always think of my root note as being on the E or A string, and the rest of the chord is being picked up with my hand. Again, a lot of times, depending on the genre, it can change, of course. Uh, you're gonna be looking at either three or four note chords for the most part. So this is a great system to kind of get into maybe playing more finger style stuff, right? So again, here we go. So here's the B minor seven to A minor seven to G major seven. And also too, you'll notice there's kind of a little bit of a percussive thing of coming back down into the string set with your fingers in this way, right? So you kind of hit the first chord, you can kind of come back into it. And it's just kind of like a bonus. You get a little bit of a percussive nature and your fingers are in the same spot because you're pulling them into your hand instead of off and over the strings, right? So the main thing to remember is kind of have your thumb out in front because you want to eventually be able to kind of like, back and forth with like an alternating way with your thumb, right? And this is used for many, many different types of genres. And the other most important thing is think of the part of your finger that is actually making contact with the string. In this case, it's not the very tip of my finger. It's more of like the inside because I'm coming into it, right? So take any chord voicing. And again, we're using chords that are rooted on either the E or the A string and just kind of play around with it. And eventually it'll be comfortable, but kind of really focus on how your hand looks. If you're up like this and kind of like an uncomfortable claw type thing, you notice that it's like, you're really just kind of like, just taking a, taking a stab at getting your fingers in the right spot, right? Again, if you can make it work, that's awesome. You know, a lot of people don't play like this, but I personally think that this is the most efficient way to always be able to get to a spot that you want to and again, because of the nature of standard tune guitar chords, it's a really good thing to be able to bounce back and forth between the E and the A string and still get the chord with your fingers.